We head to Hawaii now where Kanaka Maoli activists are calling on the US Navy to shut down its jet fuel storage facility on the island of Oahu. This has been an ongoing call by the Oahu water protectors following the 2021 leak at the facility, which the group claims has poisoned nearly 100,000 residents. The group says the Navy is aware of the issue, but is almost 400 million litres of jet fuel still needing to be removed from the deteriorating underground storage tanks. Danny Espiritu from Oahu Water Protectors is with us now from Hawaii. Kia ora, Danny. Aloha. Thank you for joining us. Aloha. Thank you so much for having me today. Now, Red Hill is an underground bulk fuel storage facility in Hawaii where the U.S. Navy stores millions of litres of fuel for their jets, but which is contaminating the Pearl Harbor water system. How exactly is the fuel leaking and impacting the waterways? Yeah, so the, um, in the 1940s, the U.S. military built an underground facility that holds like hundreds of millions of gallons of fuel, and they built it right above our aquifer where we get our water from. And so because the, the facility has degraded over time, essentially we just have uh, jet fuel leaking directly into the aquifer. And so uh, most recently in November of last uh, of 2021, we had over 20,000 gallons just kind of hemorrhage into the system. And then it was pumped into a water well that was distributed to over 93,000 uh, people. And this is awful, right? Not only, well, for a number of reasons, for people as well as the environment, but this current leak was discovered around two years ago, but still affects the local community members. What are some of the health issues that people nearby are experiencing? Yeah, absolutely. There, there are affected families who were poisoned during that time, uh, who are still like going through surgeries. Like They were bathing their kids in it. They, they were drinking, um, cooking with with uh, water that essentially had jet fuel and other carcinogenic chemicals that the military is still refusing to, to disclose. Um, and so folks are, are, are experiencing ongoing symptoms. Um, the other issue for us on, on our island specifically, the way our, the way our island is built, it's porous rock mixed with water. And so mm. our aquifer is already contaminated. And so as that fuel plume spreads, we'll have fuel coming out potentially through springs, going into our streams, affecting plants, farms. Like We're talking about the contamination of our entire island at this point. Now, looking at uh, one of the worst case scenarios, it could make waterways in the region undrinkable and for a very long time. How close do you think this could be to happening for those waterways? Um, we're really, so the, because of the state of the facility, um, all it will take is a natural disaster or an earthquake and then fuel will just hemorrhage from that facility. Um, the way that it was created is a, is a quarter inch steel liner, which if you, if you had like a water bottle about this big um, and you take the tank and you shrink it down to that size, it would be the, the width of tin foil. Um, is how thick the liner is on the on the tanks, and and they've been ex uh, in existence for over 80 years, and so um, they're actively leaking. Um, and should there be a major spill, uh, we're talking about you know over like you you had mentioned earlier, over 400 million liters uh, that could go directly into the aquifer. So that's our drinking water. That's the water that we would use to grow crops. Uh, that's the water that will flow into our oceans. Um, and so it could affect all aspects of life. Uh, essentially, we're talking about not just cultural genocide, but like the genocide of a, of a people. Now, I know that in March 2022, uh, the U.S. Department of Defense announced the planned closure of the Red Hill facility due to what they say to reduced military need and water contamination issues. In September last year, a joint task force was established to safely and expeditiously defuel the facility. Is this not quite good enough? Um, only one million gallons of fuel has been defueled from the pipes themselves since the incident has happened and even since um, the Pentagon agreed to uh, shut down the facility, no fuel has been removed from the tanks. Um, and so there's been really essentially no movement. Um, in addition, folks that were poisoned are still not being compensated uh, for um, their medical expenses. They're actually being told by the Navy. There, there are people on the, the water line that the Navy distrib distributes water to. Um, they're being forced to drink that water and are being told that it's safe, but are still experiencing symptoms, rashes, like babies are still getting sick. And so community members are the ones that are actually supplying, um, supplying a, lot of that, a lot of that for them. And so what we've been seeing is a lot of delaying, denying that there are issues 
um, and just kind of prolonging the process, which because of the state of the facility is, is time that we don't have. Yeah, no, this is, this is awful. Things have to change. Danny Espiritu from uh, Oahu Water Protectors, thank you so much for joining us today and all the best for your continued struggle. Kia ora. Mahalo, mahalo nui.